Hello everyone. Welcome to part two on how surfaces reflect light. In part one, we talked about specular reflection, which can model shiny things like mirrors and coins. But how about a piece of paper? How does it reflect light? Let's take a look under a microscope. This is what paper looks like magnified 300 times under a scanning electron microscope. It's not very flat. And if you zoom in more, the surface is pretty complex. It looks even less flat if you zoom in further. Now imagine a photon coming in. It's going to hit some part of the surface and bounce off. But if it hits this point instead, it will bounce in a different direction. Another photon falls into a hole, bounces around a few times, and comes out somewhere else. If we zoom back out, it will look like incoming photons get reflected out in all directions. That's why paper looks about the same no matter what angle you view it. Surfaces that act this way are known as diffuse. They diffuse incoming light into a wide range of outgoing directions. A light beam coming from the side gets spread over a wide part of the surface. It looks dim because each point on the surface receives a smaller proportion of the light and therefore reflects less light. The length of the green arrows are proportional to how much light gets reflected. The paper looks brightest when lit from above. Lambert's law describes a mathematical relation between incoming and outgoing intensity for diffuse surfaces. Here's how it works. Define n as a surface normal. This is a unit vector that points perpendicular to the surface. And l is the unit vector pointing towards a light source. Let's say the light source has a brightness or intensity value of i l. Then the outgoing intensity is proportional to the cosine of the angle between the normal and light source directions. We can write this as n dot l. We'll adjust this formula slightly to make sure it doesn't go negative. This is called Lambertian reflection. It predicts how bright a diffuse object is lit from different directions. Here is a diffuse sphere rendered with this formula. We can simulate what happens when we move the light source. So how about an apple? What makes it red? Does the light turn red when it bounces off? Well, not exactly. In fact, white light contains red light and the rest of the colors. We can see this by using a prism, which separates white light into its components. But how much of each color is there? It depends on the kind of light. A warm LED light has this spectrum. There's lots of green, yellow, and orange, but not much blue. The daylight spectrum is a lot different. It's got a lot of blue and green. Now light is made out of lots of photons. You can think of each photon as a little energy particle with a particular wavelength. For example, this green one is around 500 nanometers. When these photons hit the apple, most of them get absorbed. Only the red photons are reflected. And that's why the apple looks red to us. Inside the apple are red pigments, which reflect only the red photons. These are reflected in all directions, like a red diffuse material. We've talked about diffuse reflection, but it's all been black and white so far. How do we model color? We'll use three components, corresponding to the red, green, and blue. You can think of these as separate spheres, where if you add them up, you get the result, a gray sphere in this case. If we just add red and blue, we get purple. And red plus green produces yellow. In fact, we can produce any color by different combinations of these three primaries. Each of these spheres is modeled using the diffuse formula with a different weight. We can combine these together in a weight vector, which we'll specify with the variable k, and denote as k sub d for diffuse. OK, we can now model our apple using a diffuse red color. But how about that specular highlight on the left? The highlight is not red. Why not? The highlight comes from the shiny layer of wax on the surface of the apple, which specularly reflects some of the light before it hits the pigments. That's why the highlight is the color of the light source instead of being red. We can add the diffuse and specular formulas to create a red material with a white highlight. This is a powerful tool for modeling all sorts of objects because many materials in the real world have a mix of diffuse and specular reflection. But not all. 
Some materials reflect light in very exotic ways. For example, the orientation of the water ripples for this scene produces a vertically stretched reflection. Effects like this require more advanced BRDF techniques to model. I hope you've enjoyed this video on how objects reflect light.